more and more people, especially in Gen Z, are not interested in drinking cow's milk at all. We are not meant to drink milk from another mm -hmm. species and there's nothing healthy about it. You know, you can get every single nutrient that you would need from a whole foods plant-based diet and the fact of the matter is it causes acne, bloating, indigestion. They, they talk about like, oh, the environmental impact of almonds or do you know about the, an the insects dying for your soy milk? As if more soy isn't fed to, to the animals that we then use and then kill. So it, it's really, and people believe this too. Hello oat milk, goodbye cow milk. What the hell is up everyone? We are back at it again with another episode. And today I have a really badass guest. Marielle Williamson is here to join us and tell us about how she literally is suing the USDA for making her promote cow milk. I love this woman. Marielle, welcome. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. The first that I met you was at the Vegan Women Summit and I had heard of this incredible story and I just think what you're doing is so impactful and it's making a statement, making a message. So before we get into this lawsuit that you're tackling as a high schooler, why don't we talk a little bit about how you first went vegan and connected with the message? Yeah, um, I went vegan about three years ago. So I went vegan about three years ago. I saw a TED Talk by Ed Winters on the ostrich effect, where he was essentially um, describing the ostrich effect, which was when you get confronted with information that you find troubling or upsetting, which requires you to change, you look away, you get angry, you bury your head in the sand, like an ostrich. And so he connected that to our food system. And I had already been vegetarian for a few years for the animals, but I didn't really know anything about dairy. And he talked about the dairy industry and, and um, you know, the maceration of male chicks. And, you know, we all have those, those arguments. It's part of our culture. We love these foods. We don't want to give them up. But having that connected to the ostrich effect right away made me not want to give in to that. And so I started watching more documentaries and more TED Talks, some of his other videos that were animated, like on honey, and um, I went vegan. You became fanatic <laughs> like us. I think it's absolutely amazing that you were able to make the connection at that age, and also not only make the connection and go vegan, but then become a voice for the animals. How did, that, how did your friends react to this change that you were going through? Well, there's always this stereotype, so it, it's unfortunate that, you know, veganism is perceived a certain way by a people who don't have that experience. I know that was the way I perceived veganism for a long time. Um, I also just didn't get it, because, like, how you don't have to kill a cow for dairy, you know, but you do. Uh, well, technically, it's what happens, and also your world changes, like, you find this injustice that is just flourishing right under our noses and it's like how can you not talk about it but it's difficult to find the right approach at first so I'm grateful that I went vegan during the pandemic where I had my dad to to help me kind of figure out the best approach because I was very angry and a lot of that anger was put towards him in our debates about this issue but then he helped me, you know, he would say, okay, you have a point, you're right, but maybe phrase it this way. And so when I came back to in-person school, I had the tools to have these conversations with my friends. And I'm happy to say that my two best friends are, and now have been vegan for over a year. Woohoo! So, that is the yeah. best feeling, isn't it? I, yeah. I think you describe something that happens to new activists a lot. We become angry because we're looking at all this suffering and we're confused as to why the rest of the world isn't doing anything about it. And it is infuriating what's happening to animals and what is has become so normalized in our society, right? So it's hard sometimes to be able to gather all this information, process it, and then share it without that passion-fueled response. 
But what we have to learn is that if we want to be effective, we have to find a, a, a way of getting the information across that people are going to receive. Yeah, definitely. So what are some of the actions that you started to take? So you're 17 years old at Eagle Rock High School in LA and you're talking to people about the dairy industry. Tell me about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, um, it started with, with um, programs and, and working with organizations and internships before that. I, did, uh, I worked with New Roots Institute and Balanced and a little bit with Friends of the Earth. And it was um, just steps to find ways to raise awareness to peers about these issues. And so the Physicians Committee reached out to New Roots Institute and myself to look for students in California to do a campaign um, and a tabling event with on the dairy industry. And and so uh, that was the plan. We had that set up for April. We were going to have games and prizes and, and raffles, and we were going to give out um, cookbooks and recipes and stickers and just talk about the, the dairy industry, the, uh, the carbon footprint of the dairy industry, the animal cruelty, the stronghold the dairy industry has over school, our school system, and... I was told that I, I could not hold this day of action unless I also promoted dairy, too. Promoted dairy? What is there yeah. to promote? <laughs> well, I was trying to criticize, and of course, this is all peaceful, right? This is, peers like these events. I, I've done one before, and it was so engaging. Students told me, like, students I'd never met before, grades 7 through 12 were telling me we want to see plant-based milk in cafeterias. So um, I was trying to criticize also these these posters that we have in our cafeteria that are just misinformation that say in one glass of milk, there's all these nutrients, you know, and those are the posters that he wanted me to include as no. well. No. Yeah. And I should say too, my principal is 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 very kind. He he cares about his students. Technically, according to the the federal law that prevented me from doing this campaign, which states that any school that participates in the national school lunch program shall not directly or indirectly restrict the sale of fluid milk on on and off school prim, on school premises. I th I think I'm quoting that right. Essentially, you can't criticize dairy. You can't say anything about dairy that might restrict their sales. I shouldn't even be allowed to do a campaign um, like that with that federal law in place. But my principal wanted to try to meet me halfway and told me, OK, you can do it, but also promote the other side, which is already promoted so much at school. So, yeah. So you're like, no, I'm not doing this. And what happened? Yeah, I, I, we went back and forth a little bit. I said, is this the only way that I can do this campaign? And he said um, he understands my position and he's sorry. And so that's when talk of a lawsuit came up because we didn't want to just sit back and let other students be restricted that way as well. So uh, we decided to go forward with that. Amazing, amazing. I mean, it is a First Amendment right. It's, it's disgusting how protected the dairy and egg and meat industries are. You can't even just share the simple truth with the public without them being like, well, you have to you know, share these lies too while you're at it. It's like, shut up. No one likes you anymore. You're, you're old news. Hello, oat true. milk. Goodbye, cow milk. Yes, exactly. It's crazy. It's really insane. So I'm guessing this is your first lawsuit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, tell me about that. I, I wouldn't even really know the first thing about it. So are you, you served them papers? Did you work with lawyers? How did that go? Yeah, so the Physicians Committee is just incredible. They, they're also suing, I think, Aubrey Plaza and Got Milk for their collaboration. Yeah, it's just, they're so awesome. So essentially... I I worked with um, their they have a, a legal team and so they did 
all of that work honestly they did the the um media outreach too and so it's just been yeah it's just been talking about it raising awareness through news articles and and podcasts and things like that and they're doing the the paperwork aspect of it so are you gonna have to go to court i i assume so but i'm not sure i think if if it that does happen it'll be in a few years Mm. because these things do take time they take time but you know what this is amazing because you're on the new york post you're getting like major media headlines and it just really makes the dairy industry look as bad as it is you know so it's it's i think any media is super important and what a great story and way to bring this to light it's it's great too because it's coming at a time where there's the ad soy act that's going through and like the healthy future students in earth act and so these initiatives are really being pushed now and it's it's becoming more mainstream and more talked about and just looking at some of those comments in in the articles you see people who every every person that has a negative comment um, it's either unrelated to the article, like it's like, oh, do you know how much water almond milk uses when it's not even related to anything mentioned in the piece? Or the ones that do, um, there's always someone else who replies to their comment who just completely debunks their entire point. So there's a lot of support and there's a lot of awareness and you can see that it's from vegans, but it's also from non-vegans. And some of it's from students, students who are inspired to eat more plant-based, maybe not for the animals, but for the human rights aspect, which is talked about a lot in in these articles. I don't trust the people that aren't in it for the animals. (laughs) (laughs) I get that. I don't trust you. You're an imposter. No, I'm kidding. I mean, listen, whatever brings people in is great, but I will say what I think keeps you in the movement is just looking at what happens to these mother cows, having their babies ripped away from them, being killed. I mean, it is it, the dairy industry, I think, is one of the most horrific practices. It's like really weird how humans even thought one day to like suck on their udders. Yeah, it, it's it's really horrifying. I agree with you in that sense. I think whatever brings you in but but is good but then once you learn more about it and and you hear this from vegans too they're like oh i did it for health and then i realized what the heck um and i stayed in it for animals so um yeah that that's 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 really important so where do you see the future of this movement going i think more and more people especially in gen z are not interested in drinking cow's milk at all. Cheese and and dairy products, we're we're still getting there. But I think seeing it in its raw form is just gross. I know that when I was vegetarian, even before knowing about the dairy industry, I didn't want to drink cow's milk because it just felt weird. And I would feel a little uncomfortable with cheese, but I would I would just, you know, not think about it. And yeah, I think I think there's going to be um I think the movement is is growing exponentially and in the coming generations we're going to get closer to to having a a plant-based society, I guess. Mhm. And with different technologies and innovations like cultured meat, even yes. cultured milk products, at the, at the end of the day we do have to recognize though that we are not meant to drink milk from another mm-hmm. species and there's nothing healthy about it. You know, you can get every single nutrient that you would need from a whole foods plant-based diet. And the fact of the matter is, while there is certain nutrients in dairy milk, it comes at a cost of a whole load of other issues, you know, from the hormones in there. You know, it causes acne, bloating, indigestion. It's like, you can just eat kiwis and oranges to get some calcium and, soy milk for vitamin D, the D3 and B12. And, you know, it's really about changing it up and eating a variety of foods. And of course, consulting with your doctor. I always say it's great just for anybody to get a blood test once a year. If you can't do once a year, once every two years and just see where your levels are at. And if you need to, you know, take a supplement to just keep your levels even, then do that. Yeah, I mean, Americans already take so many supplements and so many animal products are 
already, um, you know, they're full of hormones and supplements too. It's just not in the ingredient label, but it, it it's true. Like, I I wrote a paper on the dairy industry when I was fifth last year, and um, I learned about how it became so mainstream, and I learned about. Um, the antibiotic use Mm. like so many antibiotics are fed to these animals that are in cramped spaces so they don't get disease but they still do and um, yeah and what you said about cell cultured meat like we don't need these products but ultimately people aren't gonna stop Uh, a lot of people won't stop and so um, we do need that right now Mm -hmm. as an option because it's better than the alternative. But yeah, we don't we don't need these foods. Right. And so foods. you know, you're talking about, you know, the the dairy industry and the posters that are in your cafeteria. It's like, well, if you're if you have to talk about whatever benefits come with dairy, then they should be talking about all the cruelty that come with dairy. Why are they allowed to post only the quote unquote positive aspects of it, which I, I don't believe that there is any. I think it's false. And I think it's untrue and they're lying. But why are they allowed to put that up in the cafeteria for all these students and young people to see and then have and then have nothing about the environmental impact, the health impact and the, the cruelty aspect of it? Mm-hmm. And you see this in um, advertisements for dairy, too. Like they say um, or, or just animal products generally they they talk about like oh the environmental impact of almonds or do you know about the an- the insects dying for your soy milk as if more soy isn't fed to to the animals that we then use and then kill so it it's really and people believe this too like like students my age these arguments come up all the time where it's just like oh soy has estrogen or whatever oh. and like soy is is bad for the environment almonds use a ton of water which they do but it's not comparable to water in the dairy industry yes bam mic drop and i think these are things that they hear on mainstream media podcasts joe rogan you know put out an episode where he's talking about all the mice and the insects in the field and how vegans kill more animals and they act like they're, they don't eat any avocados or they don't eat any tomatoes and that they're not, re- you know, it's, it, it, they don't even realize that you were saying that m- it's over 60% of the food, the crops that are grown are fed to the farm animals so you could reduce crop deaths by just going vegan. It's not even yeah. comparable, uh, the numbers. And it's also intentional death versus unintentional killing. Sure, we need to make changes in our farming system. Ultimately, I think that we are coming to a point where we're developing technologies like per- permaculture and where we can have vertical garden gardening where it can be done in uh, buildings as opposed to like fields where we have to use all these pesticides and herbicides and kill insects. I mean, ultimately, vegans want to just reduce harm. That's that's where we're coming from. What is so bad about that? Yeah, and also there's Piers Morgan, which I see a lot, which my friends send me um reels of him and it's just funny because it gets taken it gets put on social media he makes a a ridiculous point like do you eat avocados do you eat almonds and then the clip stops like you don't hear the vegan's response when i've seen those interviews and the vegan responds really well although piers morgan is 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 difficult to respond to because he interrupts all the time but um, people see that, they don't hear the rebuttal, and so they're like, oh, roasted. And then they, like, I've had those arguments brought to me directly, and I just, like, counter their point, and then they just don't know what to say. So then they go back to s- social media or whatever, and then they bring back another point. And it's just like, there's no independent thinking, and it's difficult to do that when you have all this misinformation mm-hmm. thrown it gets exhausting, doesn't it? It gets. I feel like a broken record sometimes. And then it's like you go online, you see all these mean comments, and you see just how much work we have left to do as vegans. How does that make you feel? And how do you how do you deal with that? 
it's difficult. Like I was just on vacation and I we eat plant based at home now. Finally, <laughs> I was gonna and, ask you um, about that. Wow, that's great. Yeah, my family isn't a hundred percent there, but they they're actively trying. Except for my little brother, but um, yeah, I really appreciate that of them. I think it it was a it was a journey, but we're we're there now, and they talk about it with family friends, so it's really great. But um, going on vacation, getting out of that bubble, and going to places where you see like 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 a <laughs> like a duck, you know, like oh. a duck that's cooked, but you see the the body. Or, you know, in grocery stores, I just avoid the meat aisle entirely. Dairy, there's so much plant-based dairy that it you don't really think about it. But when you're brought out of that bubble, it's very difficult to deal with. It like brings you back and it's hard not to think about all that suffering that happens every second. But I think what helps is knowing that so many other people experience the same thing and once you find a community of people who aren't just vegan but are advocating for it all the time um, and feel the same passion that you feel it, it makes it a lot easier that is i you said it you said it that is so well said i couldn't relate more and it's one of those things where even just meeting you for the first time you know and you immediately feel that connection and you immediately are like, all right, this is my girl. Like, I, I, I know you, I get you. And it's funny because some of my friends and family that I've known my whole life, I'm like, we're not friends anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you're, no. you're an animal yeah. abuser, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a friend who, she's Argentinian, and I remember um, the first time we really talked about this she told me i i'm never going vegan like meat is so big in my culture and i was um pretty upset with her because it's just like this closed mentality but then i just decided to like bring it up little by little you know um and and now she's vegan and she has been for a year so yeah i just think talking about it is really important. Absolutely. Every vegan ever once said, oh, I'm never going vegan. Yeah. Right? I remember thinking it was so extreme and obviously I didn't understand really why people were vegan. I didn't know about the dairy and the egg industries and it's easy to close your eyes to even just the slaughterhouse footage, you know, oh, I don't want to look. I want to look away. Oh, I can't watch that. Yeah. Well, if you can't watch it, why are you eating it? So it's, I made the connection when I was around 16, 17, uh, with, it was always a goal of mine to go vegan. Uh, but just throughout high school, I was like vegetarian for six months and then I wasn't, and then I was, it was like this social pressure, right? Mm-hmm. But it, it, uh, it's one of those things like where, where once a light bulb goes off, you just, you can't not get it. Yeah, it, yeah, and that's why it, it's, it's crazy to see people who are so passionate then come out with videos of like, oh, I'm no longer vegan. I don't understand it. I, um, I really, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like, okay, would you do that with any other social cause? So yeah. you recognize that something is inhumane or you recognize that something is uh, terribly wrong and cruel and then you one day try to justify it it's like would you do that with any other movement like the lgbtq movement you recognize that people have and should have the right to love whoever they want to love and then the next day you take that that back it's really strange yeah yeah definitely sounds like they're very confused people anyway uh what do you think are effective forms of activism so for people that are listening right now how can they start to get involved like you did if they're young if they're students yeah so aside from like just having conversations and learning the right approaches i would say um there's so many resources out there so many organizations to any student who's listening um college or high school the physicians committee that they're there for support um we all want the same thing there's new roots institute formerly Factory Farming Awareness Coalition, 
which has a great internship. That was the first internship I did. It's not limited, this, this stuff is not limited to vegans, but it is focused on learning about that and making those changes. The Youth Steering Committee has an internship, um, Balanced, Friends of the Earth, all these organizations, uh, PETA, they, they all have resources for students. Um, even if you just want to start by putting stickers in grocery stores or, or give out um, leaf, uh, leaflet, um, yeah, there, there are those resources. That's such a great point. And not only that, but Allied Scholars for Animal Protection is another organization that will provide you materials, set you up in a booth, and you can do outreach at college campuses. So being that you just graduated, that could be something that you bring to school. So what are your future plans? Yeah, so I would like to go to law school eventually. I am going to Duke University's campus in China. So they opened a branch about 10, 15 years ago. And so you do all four years there, but you can do a semester in Duke in America. And I'm going to be majoring in international relations and public policy and minoring in Spanish because I want to tackle these issues just internationally. Like, I think it'll be through the form of environmental justice, even though for me at the root of it is is animal rights. But I think logically to effectively combat climate change, we need to address animal agriculture. And so to be able to, to do that, I don't know, maybe try to work for the UN or something. Yes. Um, have have countries actually put in initiatives to address animal agriculture's impact on climate change is what I want to do. So incredible. The animals are so lucky to have you on their side. And I always say we need to infiltrate. We need to get our kind into the halls of Congress, into the UN, into lawmaking places because that is ultimately where the most amount of action is going to take place when you look at the government subsidies the dairy industry specifically they're bailed out over and over and over again even if consumers are not buying that amount of product and people like you are going to go in there and shake things up (sighs) and i will be there to document it and make my insane commentary (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's it's super cool. I, I really I admire you know your passion. You're obviously very smart, very well spoken, and just keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing forward. We need all of it. Thank you, and and same for you too. Like every everything you do, every kind of um, approach and type of activism you do, whether it's at NARD or like on the street. Uh, it's really needed, it's really important, and it's really impactful. Thank you, and I do believe, you know, guys, for those of you that are listening, it's so important to bring your own personality and your own approach to this issue. Because somebody like Marielle, that, you know, you seem very studious and very well-spoken and smart, and then there's me, who is a little wacky, a little out there, I'm going to reach certain people, she's going to reach certain people, and then you guys are going to also reach certain people with your own approach. Because I think in order for us to be powerful activists in the long run and to sustain ourselves, we need to just be ourselves and bring that into the movement. So if you're uh, somebody that's super into art, you can make great posters, you can go stand outside of a supermarket. If you like to talk, you could do what I do in podcasts and YouTube. If you're into film, make documentaries. I mean, there's so many things that we can do. We just got to put our nose to the grindstone. Is that the saying? I think so. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm really dating myself here. Okay. (laughs) I'm 25, so I'm not that old, people. but. (laughs) But amazing. And so how can people get in touch with you and reach out to you? Um, well, I have LinkedIn and Instagram. It's just Marielle two underscores Williamson. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or like want support with with going vegan or or getting um, in touch with organizations, um, especially as a student, please feel free to reach out. 
Amazing. It's so funny. You have LinkedIn. It took me like years to get a LinkedIn. I fought it until like my senior year of college. I'm like, I don't want this, but I have it. So, and you guys know where to reach me. I am at It's Jamie's Corner and always happy to reach out and answer questions. I can't guarantee I'll be on LinkedIn, but um, Marielle will be. <laughs> so until next time, thanks for listening and uh, let's keep suing the USDA for their bullshit. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.